Hello everyone and welcome to our devotional update. Pastor Hogley with you today from Faith Lutheran Church here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. By way of announcements today, we would just like to draw attention to the fact that on the weekend of the 15th and 16th, we will have a special musical group being with us to help and lead us in our worship. His Way will be with us. They will be leading worship on Saturday evening at 5.30. And then they will also have a special concert in the sanctuary following the 5.30 service, starting around 7 o'clock. They also then will be leading our worship on Sunday morning at the 10.30 service. Our Thursday night service and our 7.45 service on Sunday will be more of the traditional style and format of a communion liturgy. Also, this weekend, we begin our Bible Hour between services on Sunday morning. We begin with our new offering of Bible classes. We have a Bible class being taught by Pastor Pufa, studying the book of Romans, and a Bible study being taught by Pastor Haig from Winnebago Lutheran Academy, and his topic of study will be world religions. If you haven't had a chance to join us for our Bible classes, this would be a great time to get in on the ground level as we begin a new series of studies. As we turn our attention to the Word of our God for today, I wonder if over the holiday you did some traveling. And maybe if you did some traveling, did you go to a place that was somewhat unfamiliar? And as you began your journey, you thought you knew where you were going, but it soon became apparent that you did not. And then you wished you would have looked up the address on your phone and found out exactly what was the best and most direct way of getting to your destination. When it comes to spiritual lives, sometimes we find ourselves in situations that are maybe unfamiliar, uncharted waters. In the Word of God that we have for today, we have the account of the Magi who came from a long ways away, and they came at the direction of the Word of God. Even though their pathway had many distractions along the way, Herod being one of them, those believers listened to the Word of their God. Their faith trusted that Word. Their faith followed that Word. And ultimately, their faith led them to worship their God. As we journey in our life of faith, we too have all kinds of distractions that would keep us from staying close to Jesus. Our schedules and our lives now are back to routine. We're back into the schedule of family life and commitment. We had a wonderful opportunity with many special services, but as we get caught up into the flow of life again, those worship service opportunities maybe don't have as high a priority as they did during the festival time. There are a lot of distractions that the world would have us, whether it be our own health concerns or whether it be relationships or whether it be our financial concerns, distractions that would keep us away from the promises of God's word. And yet it is that word that keeps us close to Jesus. It is that word that assures us that God, he's got this. He's got everything that we need for our body and life. And when we continue to hear that word, that word keeps our faith strong. And it leads us to do exactly what it did for those magi, how they came and they worshiped Jesus. As we celebrate this epiphany of our Lord, the time in our Christian church here where we hear the word of God revealing Jesus as exactly who God said he was, God's own son, the savior of the world. We see and know him to be exactly as God said he would be, that which we needed more than anything else. One who would lead and guide us through all of the travels of life here in this sinful world, but more importantly, the one that has opened up the gates of heaven, the one that has removed our guilt, the one that gives us peace every night when we lay our head down on our pillow, assuring us that our sins are all forgiven. As we hear these words of our God, may God's Spirit bless us to know that Jesus is the one 
whose word keeps us close to him and leads us to have hearts of faith that worship him. We hear these words from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. These are God's words. We go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your faithfulness, how you first gave that promise to Adam and Eve that you would send your one and only Son, the Savior of the world, how throughout all the pages of the Old Testament you repeated that promise to assure your people that you had not forgotten them or forsaken them. And when the time had fully come, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, that baby born in Bethlehem, to come into the world to be the Savior of all people. During this season of Epiphany, lead us to worship and to praise him for who he is, both true man and true God, the one and the only Savior of the world from sin, death, and the power of the devil. We ask all of these things in our Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a great day in the Lord, everyone, and we'll see you real soon.